All right, you beautiful humans. If you didn't get enough of my testing of the Thunderbolt 3 performance on the M1 Max, well, how about if I actually installed Monterey, the beta, the developer's beta, to see if it actually offers up any improvements like we actually saw on iPadOS 15. Now, of course, here's the thing, folks. NVMe is a communication protocol, and Apple is just not picking up the phone on this one. Not unless we actually slam it with a bunch of simultaneous tasks on our honey-do list. And then it finally kicks in, per my testing that is, as well as others that have attempted to find some level of performance boost by connecting a hub like this one and adding multiple SSDs or connecting a Thunderbolt display to really kind of get an edge on that performance. And additionally, months of tests and teardowns confirm that we actually have two dedicated Gen 4 PCI Express lanes heading toward that controller on the SOC. However, there is still that need for that Intel retimer at the port to clean up and equalize that signal. And I've actually talked about that quite a bit. Now, comparing to the previous data that I had collected on Big Sur directly connected to the mini, I was getting 3112 on that read and 1399 on that write using disk mark. I also performed a test where I had parallels open with Windows and Windows just constantly writing to the drive, which is actually definitely for another video. But when running this simultaneously with disk mark, I was able to get directly 3149 uh, on that read and 2589 on that write, direct connection to the mini. Now, of course, connecting it through the anchor, I was getting 3154 on the read and 2626 on that write. And again, this is actually running a program and tasks through emulation that continue to write about 15 terabytes of information over several days, not just a straight benchmark with just having some apps open and really just Mac OS running. I really do need to actually do a video on the simulation because even with all of the videos that I have edited over this last year, it doesn't even come close to 15 terabytes of, of data. But again, I think that's probably for another video. It was kind of ridiculous, but let's move on. So after installing Monterey and running some initial uh, benchmarks directly connected to the mini, I was actually getting 3120 on the read and 1249 on that write with no emulation and without taxing the system in any way. And something interesting that I did find is that when I went ahead and loaded up Windows through Parallels, and during that process of just starting up uh, that operating system, I did get 3149 on the read with 2394 on that write. And what I ended up doing is just letting things kind of settle down overnight and just left that emulation active just to see if it would just randomly write data to the drive as it had been doing on Big Sur. It is still hungry for RAM though, but to my surprise, it was actually, it, it wasn't writing just randomly as it was before. However, when on Big Sur, I could actually pause Windows and it would still just randomly write just, I mean, terabytes of data. So again, I think probably for another video, but when running the benchmark again with emulation just idle, not doing anything, this actually resulted in 3120 on the read and 1226 on the write. Now, for those that may might be worried because the disk that I actually had as far as um, this particular drive having 20% less capacity available, I went ahead and ran the same benchmark on the other Acasis enclosure with the SN750 and I got 3126 on the read and 1235 on the write. So really no difference there. And through the anchor, with no other tasks running through that hub, it was 3123 on the read and 1222 on the write. And this also is with that USB-C monitor behind me um, connected directly to the mini. So not a, um, not a Thunderbolt display, not Thunderbolt connected, just USB-C. Now, of course, I did run a, a, another benchmark where I played Rocket League and, and not really <laughs> very well. But when I did that simultaneously and running that benchmark, I got 3147 on the read, 2694 on the write. And it's not really any kind of surprise here based on all the additional testing that I've done over this last year where you're just taxing the system and throwing as much at it as possible. Now, two quick real world benchmarks that I did run was that I exported the same 4K timeline on the external SSD uh, in Big Sur. And I got a result of five minutes and seven seconds. 
and then I perform that same export with all of the render transcoded and, an, uh, and analysis files, all of that removed, I got four minutes and 58 seconds. But let me actually say here that I, I think for those few seconds, we're, we're likely just because we had a fresh boot up and fewer background tasks that were happening. So really what I would say is that it was, they were kind of on par with each other. So what does all of this really mean? Well, even though it seemed as if we got that performance bump with iPadOS 15, at least with my testing, it still doesn't appear that this is as simple as Apple's engineers uh, being able to get this communication protocol dialed in because we're likely at the limit of what the M1 chip can really do without calling up any of these extra tasks and basically alert the Thunderbolt controller that it's all good to just open up that throughput through that lane and allow it to be saturated on its own. So it really does beg uh, the question here of whether you need to get one of these Thunderbolt hubs or docks just strictly for performance. And really it would also come down to whether you need or want to run simultaneous tasks. And, and you know, to that I say, if you need extra IO, simply put, if you just need the extra IO, then hands down, it is a worthwhile investment. But this whole idea of investing in a Thunderbolt display or running a headless em emulator just to get the performance when it really may not even be consistent and ultimately an exercise in futility and frustration if after all, you're really just going after theoretical speed. Now, of course, none of this is actually supposed to excuse Apple and whatever is happening with this protocol, but I can't deny the fact that this device has been one of the best investments I've made in my business, and I've really tried to do everything short of smashing it, um, and it, it really just does, it keeps trucking along and giving me back more time in my business. So... I don't think Big Sur is the equivalent of Windows Vista by any means, but I will say that even this early developer's release of Monterey seems to be what we should have gotten when M1 was actually launched. But I'll probably do more on that later. I really just wanted to keep this short and sweet as I could and make this one, you know, sort of an in and out as best I can. So you know where to find me, do those things that matter, rock those faces, and I'll catch you right back here on the next one. Anybody interested in something simple like reviewing a plug or something? I mean, I do have data. I, I have some numbers. Just saying. <laughs>